On what started off as a seemingly perfect summer's day, the stage was unknowingly being set for a horror show. Twenty-two unsuspecting souls, drawn to the thrill of the surf rider, were about to be trapped in a nightmare that no thrill could match. A day of fun was about to descend into terror. But what could turn an amusement ride into a heart-stopping disaster? And who were the people who experienced the horror firsthand? Stay with us as we peel back the layers of this haunting tale, an incident that continues reverberating through time, leaving behind a chilling memory. Brace yourself, for this is not a journey for the faint-hearted. Every summer, Skegness Pleasure Beach pulsates with laughter, filled with joyous families, tourists, and fun seekers seeking an escape from the mundane. The amusement park is a riot of colors, a carnival of thrills, and a panorama of heart-stopping excitement. Among its many attractions, the Surfrider stood tall. The impressive structure was adorned with bright hypnotic lights, promising a thrilling adventure that was not for the faint-hearted. It was more than just a ride. It was a test of courage, a summer tradition that brought with it the purest form of exhilaration. The company behind all these happy moments was Pleasure Beach Amusements. This company, while not always visible, was responsible for making the park a place of joy and countless smiles. However, beneath this surface of fun and excitement, a scary secret was hidden. There was a disaster waiting to happen, ticking away silently while everyone was busy enjoying themselves, leading up to a terrible event that no one could have seen coming. On the 30th of August, 2011, the fairground was vibrant as usual. The sun was generous, the breeze gentle, and the joyous clamor of visitors filled the air. Among them were 22 thrill-seekers, their hearts pulsating with anticipation, ready to conquer the surf rider. Amid the crowd that day was Alice Thorne, a 16-year-old student from Hinckley, Leicestershire. An adrenaline junkie by nature, she had come for the thrill, completely unaware of what was about to unfold. The ride began. The atmosphere was electric with giddy screams, and the world outside was reduced to a colorful blur. But then, in the midst of the thrill, something shifted. A jolt, a slight deviation from the ride's rhythm. Is it going to snap? Alice's words hung in the air, a chilling prophecy that none aboard would ever forget. Even amidst the music and laughter, the abnormal groan of the mechanical beast did not go unnoticed. Something was not right. The laughter faded and the screams of joy became gasps of fear. The thrill was now terror. The unexpected twist in the tale was just about to unfold. The surf rider, once a mechanical symbol of joy and thrill, jerked violently. The unexpected twist in the tale was no longer impending. It was happening. The surf rider crashed to the ground. People rushed over, their faces pale, their hands reaching out to the trapped riders. But Alice waited at the top of the collapsed ride. The minutes turned into an hour. Finally, a beacon of hope shone brightly, the fire service. Their sirens sliced through the clamor, their presence a testament to their commitment to safety. They swooped into action, their focused gaze and efficient movements reflecting the situation's urgency. Seven passengers, their laughter from minutes ago replaced with gasps of pain, were rushed to the hospital. The ghost of the accident loomed over them, adding to their physical discomfort. As medical professionals scurried around them, the gravity of their situation became more apparent. For three passengers, their ordeal extended beyond the confines of that dreaded day. Their injuries were severe enough to warrant an overnight stay at the hospital. For them, the echoes of the collapsing ride filled their night. Each beep of the hospital machinery was a grim reminder. Their hospital beds became their islands of recovery, their sanctuaries from the nightmare they had endured. The trauma had not just bruised their bodies, it had also left a mark on their minds. The night brought no respite, only the grim reality of their condition. Their survival was a victory against a tragedy they would carry long after their wounds healed. As the dust settled, the health and safety executive stepped onto the scene their task as daunting as it was crucial. They had one mission, to unravel the invisible threads that had woven the tragedy. Their investigation led them into the heart of the surf rider. Beneath the glossy paint and flashing lights, a grim reality lurked. The lifeline of the ride, its very essence, was flawed. The gearbox, a critical component that ensured the smooth operation of the ride, was starved of oil. This lack of lubrication was like a ticking time bomb its countdown ominously silent yet deadly. 
This mechanical starvation had a domino effect. A bearing in the gearbox overheated and seized, jamming the passenger car's leveling mechanism. Imagine a well-rehearsed orchestra suddenly thrown off beat, each instrument veering off rhythm, leading to a cacophonous disaster. The chapter on accountability was now giving way to a stage of confrontation. The hallowed halls of Skegness Magistrate's Court, a crucible where justice was brewed, now took center stage. It was here, amidst the rich tapestry of British law, that the fate of Pleasure Beach Amusements would be decided. Inside the courtroom, the atmosphere was palpable. A heavy air of anticipation hung like a shroud over the gathered audience. Pleasure Beach Amusements, the once revered puppet master of joy, stood exposed under the harsh spotlight of justice. Lawyers like skilled craftsmen began to weave their arguments, their words slicing through the thick tension. The echoes of the Surfrider disaster reverberated through the courtroom as testimonies were read, medical reports examined, and the damning findings of the HSE investigation were laid bare. The revelations from the HSE investigation cast long, ominous shadows over Pleasure Beach. Amusements limited their negligence, once shrouded in the midst of joyous laughter and giddy screams, was now glaring and undeniable. The court's judgment echoed through the quiet room, a thunderous pronouncement against the deafening silence. Pleasure Beach Amusements was found guilty of breaching the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974. The company's failure to maintain the ride and their disregard for the very lives that sought joy in their establishment had severe and irreversible consequences. The courtroom held its breath as the gavel came down, a harbinger of justice. A fine of 8,000 pounds was imposed on Pleasure Beach Amusements, a stark reminder of the steep cost of negligence. But the fallout extended far beyond the financial implications. The verdict was a clear message, etched in the annals of British law. The safety of individuals cannot and should not be compromised. The cost, as the victims of the Surfrider accident knew all too well, went far beyond a fine. It was a price paid in trauma, fear, and irrevocable scars. The court proceedings marked the end of a chapter in the Surfrider tragedy. For the victims, their own personal stories of the Surfrider disaster continued to unfold long after the gavel's final sound. Their lives, once marked by carefree laughter and innocent thrills, were now etched with the imprint of that ill-fated ride. Take Alice, for example. Her love for heights and the thrill of fairground rides was forever tainted by the memory of that day. Even in her dreams, she relived the horror. The fear of heights, rides, lifts, and elevators clung to her like a shadow, and Alice was not alone in her struggle. The Surfrider accident shook the faith of many in seemingly innocuous joy rides and lifts. The laughter and screams of delight that once filled the fairgrounds were now tinged with fear, a grim reminder of the potential price of neglect. Their lives were forever altered, and their worldviews significantly shifted. An experience meant to elicit joy had instilled a deep-seated fear, an amusement park, a place synonymous with fun, had become the scene of a nightmare. It was a chilling reminder that tragedy often lurks in the most minor expected corners. It's time to draw the curtains on this harrowing tale of joy turned tragedy, of a day that started with the promise of fun, but ended in disaster. The Surfrider accident at Pleasure Beach, a devastating incident that entrapped 22 innocent souls, was not a result of chance. It was an avoidable tragedy born of negligence and oversight. This oversight led to the terrifying moment when the ride jolted, tilted, and crashed. It shows how even minor maintenance tasks can prevent the biggest disasters. As HSE Inspector David Kivlin rightly pointed out, the accident, as traumatic as it was, could have resulted in even more severe injuries. Although the, the ride uh, has failed, um, the safety mechanisms had secured everybody and everybody was still in place on that ride. But even so, the effects were far from minor. The victims, many of them children, were forced to confront fear and pain that no one, let alone children, should ever have to endure. The echoes of the Surfrider tragedy remind us of the immense responsibility operators have in ensuring the safety of their rides. Failing to uphold this duty can result in a day of fun becoming a day of horror. In the end, what remains is a painful memory etched into the lives of the victims, an experience that left Alice Thorne and many others grappling with fears that extended beyond the confines of the amusement park, spilling over into their daily lives. This a stark reminder that neglect can lead to devastating consequences, 
turning laughter into screams and joy into fear. 